first to the fundamentals of biblical inerrancy, integrity, global missions, dedicated servanthood, diversity, <coughs> and the vision of academic excellence as a resource center and a change agent. Your mission is to develop relevant Christian leaders for the ministry and the marketplace. My own seminary holds to these same values and that shared foundation forms the basis for the partnership that our schools have formed, whereby students in Tokyo can earn a doctorate of ministry through Bureau Heights. It is our prayer that this relationship will further the students and the ministries of both institutions to the benefit of the global kingdom of God. Thank you for the opportunity to be a part of the historically significant event, your 100th anniversary. Our seminary looked forward, looked forward to our own future centennial celebration of God's continued blessings. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Oyama. And I have a feeling you came the longest distance to get here. <laughs> there are so many reflections to be given tonight. Brian? There are some people who truly believe in doing God's ministry, even when it means leaving behind a budding business career to work with delinquent urban youth, uprooting his entire family to live in the inner city to serve those in need. Without further ado, Eula Heights University's former board member and advisory board president, there are some people who truly believe in doing God's ministry, even when it means leaving behind that career. Please welcome former member of the board and advisory board president, Dr. Bob Lupton. Honor to celebrate this occasion with uh, fellow believers. Um, not every success is a straight line. Sometimes there are bumps in the road. And uh, when Sam recruited me as a board member, uh, he said that he needed a street fighter. And I took that as a compliment. Tonight I give you just a little bit of inside history that. Uh, uh, may be of interest to you. Uh, this is the 100th anniversary. School was birthed out of the Pentecostal fervor of the late 19th century, when there was a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit in our land. It was the driving passion of our founders to teach holiness doctrine and equip students for evangelistic ministry. Uh, Beulah Heights has had many colorful leaders uh, over its 100-year history. All of them have come from a Pentecostal tradition. In the early days, the holiness movement was on fire, the school grew, but over time, by the late uh, 1900s, there were serious concerns that the school might not be able to survive. Student Enrollment was down, finances were at a critical point, uh, and Sam, who was then president, uh, asked if I would be willing to join the, the board. Um, Sam took the reins and uh, asked the trustees of the board if he could recruit uh, local uh, pastors and even some business people uh, to help strengthen the finances and the, uh, the leadership of the board. Uh, up to that time, uh, all of the board members were ministers from Ohio, uh, part of the Interdenominational Pentecostal Holiness Church, IPHC. 
Uh, those pastors would drive in uh, periodically for board meetings, and it was begin. It was uh, over time becoming difficult to to get a quorum. The energy was rather low. Then Sam came up with an exciting idea. They uh, said recruit some local pastors, not necessarily Pentecostal pastors but folks that could bring some local support. And that's when Sam approached me. Now, uh, I'm a Presbyterian, not a, not a Pentecostal. <laughs> and I'm a layman, not a minister. Uh, but my father and brother were both holiness ministers, and uh, so I understand the culture and I can speak the language. Uh, and so I was accepted as a board member. It was right after I accepted that uh, that invitation that I learned that the inter interdenomination or uh, yeah, International Pentecostal Holiness Church, a denomination uh, in the north uh, that owned the college was struggling financially. I also learned that uh, Beulah Height board members who were IPHC members were seriously considering selling the college property. The sale of the property would be a windfall for their struggling denomination, but it would likely spell the end of the college. And so Sam asked me if I would take the lead in negotiating uh, this transaction. That's where he said he needed a street fighter. <laughs> At a meeting uh, shortly after that, the full board, which now included local uh, ministers and members, the official announcement was made by the IPHC spokesman declaring the decision of the denomination to sell the property. The new board members, of course, were stunned. The college was barely making payroll, let alone mounting a campaign of several million dollars for a buyout. The announcement seemed like, like death. But Sam informed the board that he'd asked me to head up a committee to negotiate the transaction. And, uh, and so we had our first meeting. First task of the committee was to examine the title to verify the ownership. We hired a reputable law firm here in Atlanta. Uh, they went to work and what came back stunned all of us. Uh, they told us that the IPHC did not actually own the property. That years ago, the title had been filed, filed in the name of Beulah Heights Bible College, a Georgia corporation. It had never been transferred to the IPHC denomination, as they had assumed. Though obviously, the denomination could not sell what it did not own. <laughs> the, next, the next board meeting, the IPHC trustees were expecting to hear our offer to purchase the property. Instead, what they heard was, you don't own this property, therefore, you cannot sell what you don't own. The next big item on the agenda, of course, was uh, even more sobering. By, declining, by declaring their intention to liquidate the college's physical assets and thus endanger its very existence, they had demonstrated a serious conflict of interest. It was obvious to everyone that they were no longer serving in the best interests of the college. Their resignation was called for. Unceremoniously, pastors left the meeting and headed back to Ohio, thus ending a long deteriorating relationship between Beulah Heights College and the interdenominational Pentecostal Holiness Church. The college was then free to soar. And soar it has. Twelve, twelve students trained in a program uh, that they launched in 1918. It's blossomed into a university a hundred years later. Beulah Heights has become a place of inspiration and preparation for literally thousands of Christians around the globe. It's grown into one of the nation's largest, predominantly minority institution, drawing its nearly 800 students from 50 different denominations. 
Its curriculum ranges from rudimentary ESL certification to scholarly PhD degrees. And its current president, Dr. Benjamin Karanja, is a Presbyterian. <laughs> Thank you for that history lesson. Wow. Are you having a good time? I see on this side, y'all having a good time. Are y'all having a good time? Can we give a nice round of applause to our, our, our staff and, and the waiters and the waitresses and the sound people? My, uh, my late grandmother told me a long time ago, it's not the, it's not the ticket makers, it's the ticket takers. So we want to make sure we give them another big round of applause. Because well, loud as you clap, you're going to need some hot sauce in a minute. And only the special ones have the hot sauce. Speaking of hot sauce, bringing more flavor to the stage right now, we're going to bring up for a, another